A welcome to Heidelberg, the city nestled on the banks of the Necker River, surrounded by mountains and hillside, a medieval town hosting a thoroughly modern event, the World Under-24 Ultimate Championships. And we're in the men's division final myself, Tom Stiles, alongside the wonderful Liam Grant, amped up and excited to see these two North American sides, USA and Canada, meet for the first time this tournament, Liam. Yeah, it's going to be a classic, Tom. Two North American teams going head to head. Talk a little about their road to the final here. For Canada, you got to go back to Perth 2018. They lost 15-5 to Australia in the group stages. Ended up playing USA in the quarters. Lost that game, finished fifth. A big disappointment for the Canadian side. So they came into this tournament with a point to prove. Got through the quarterfinals universe point win against Colombia. Cole Keffer scoring the winning goal in that game. Beat Japan in the semis. Cole Keffer also scoring the winning goal in that game. While the odds, Tom, he could score the winner in this matchup. A man who's actually been USA before in 2014 at junior levels. Talk about USA. They've been clinical all tournament long. Took down Australia in the quarters. Chewed them up and spat them out 15-3, Tom. Dismantled the Italians 15-7. Italians that was the final from last year. Yeah, the USA looking strong and clinical. Can the Canadians upset them? We'll be back with the first poll after this. it early. Help us teach kids about cancer symptoms through Ultimate Frisbee Clinics. Join us and speak up. The fans are in the stands, the flags are waving, including the Olympic flag, Ultimate and the World Flying Disc Federation, one of the sports recognized by the Olympic International Olympic Committee. And all these uh, players, uh, participants are under the uh, influence of WADA as well. USA in the blue and red. The class side in this tournament so far. Look out for strong performances from Mac Hecht in the 74 shirt and also Tanner Johnson wearing 21. They will be the stalwarts of this O-line and USA are starting on offense. Yeah, Mac Hecht actually sat out of yesterday's game against Italy just one assist that game. They got a few early breaks and they just kind of kept in the back locker. Didn't need him in that matchup. Was carrying a small bit of an ankle injury, but I expect him to take over this game, Tom. Well, the Italians run this assassinator zone where they have a zone, but then they one-on-one they -on -one mark the main handler, which was Mac Hecht. The coaching staff were quite happy to tell us afterwards that they were expecting that. And as soon as Mac saw it coming, he got himself out of the way. And they basically played a six-on-six -six point with Mac and his defender moved out of the way. So smart coaching from this USA line. The Canadians are going to need the USA to make mistakes. They're going to need to play their A game in order to have a chance here. The USA have looked the class side this week. The opening pull is down and we are underway in this men's division final. The world under 24 ultimate championships. Hecht immediately reaches into the tool bag and sends the hammer over the top into the hands of Randolph. Hecht again dumps it back. Long under a bit of pressure manages to find it out to Scyther. Hecht popping into the cup and the scuba to Fisher Quick movement, USA, high disc from Fisher. Linear reaches up and grabs Hecht into the end zone. 
away from the fingertips, an opening turnover. Big stretching pass into the end zone, Liam. Yeah, Mac Hector, Tanner Johnson, which has been the vocal point of this USA offense, did not expect them to turn over. Actually, that was the one turnover in the Columbia game was actually Mac Hecht to Tanner Johnson. Yeah, those two have been connecting all the way through. Canada with their own bobble. Man, to keep it alive. Those two players also play together on dig in Boston. Bisson for Canada. Chance to break in this opening point, the men's division final. Gold medal up for grabs. And a big bid, but it's just too far away. Jason Huhn stretches, but it, the USA have got it back. Do you think they're going to make the same mistake again? Yeah, that was a gift from the USA team, and Canada just cough it right back up to them. Johnson, Scyther available on the reset. Hex cuts across, not looking like that ankle has got giving him any problems out there. Fisher cuts hard. Oh, the floaty disc. It was too hecked on the front line, but twice in this first point, the USA have given the disc to Canada. Kuhn cuts down the line. Canada look tired. They look at jogging a little bit out there, not putting too much energy into their cuts. The reset is going to have to be used. Something amiss about the body language from the Canadians as Hoy sends a deep shot downfield. Going to require a grab of some quality. Good positioning by the defender. No call on the play. Nicholas Dacisto, nothing he could do to get up there. Yeah, a bit of a hock and hope from the Canadian side. It's almost like they weren't expecting to get the disc off the USA team. No real structure to their D-line offense. And you wonder how many opportunities they're going to get to break against this US side. Well, the stands are packed extremely hot in Heidelberg today. We're expecting temperatures up to 33 Celsius, which is the high 80s. Yeah, I'm sweating like a bag of cats at a greyhound meet, Tom. It is hot here in Heidelberg. Hecht with the deep shot to Fisher, running towards the back of the end zone. Three players bid, they all collide. The disc goes popping off the top of the stack and into the fans at the back of the arena. Three turnovers from the USA in the opening point. Neither side really clicking here. Let's have a look at this Canadian D-line offense. Again, as a deep shot goes up. Fisher just cuts underneath the disc a little bit too much. The two Canadians were right there, making sure they dispatched the disc out of the field. That's a big gain of yards. OJ Samet on the far side. Gets it back inside. The Kisto again. Back to Hun. Canadians, you feel, have to score. That's a floaty disc forward, and again, it's um, Lee Ash. Jonah Lee Ash sends the disc too forward, too far forward into the turf. Three times the USA have given up the disc in this opening offensive point. Three times the Canadians have given it to, back to them. Going into Callahan territory now. That back pass from the end zone line hecht fakes with the big arm holds on to it johnson advancing slowly zander kuzen tice and scyther now hecht get tr struggling to get free eventually does get away from Huen. has to go to ground catches one hand they're being pushed hard, the USA here, and I think they've got them rattled, the Canadians. You need to put it in now. Hecht to the front corner, and eventually, on the third time of asking, they know that they've got away with it there. The USA celebrate with an opening hold, but my goodness me, it was messy, Liam. Yeah, not what we've seen from the USA team at this event. They turn over more on that point than they did in the whole semi-final, Tom, the USA O-line. And... Again, Canada, you got to look at that. There was plenty of gifts, plenty of opportunities for them to get the first break of the game in the first point. Would have really swung momentum with them, get the crowd on their side. I think the crowd is on their side anyway. <laughs> but they're, they're looking for something to cheer, aren't they? they, they I mean, one of the things this, this USA team prepare for is the fact that everything that... Uh, they do is going to get a mild cheer and everything that the, their opposition do is going to get a huge roar from the crowd so that big disc into the end zone get tipped off but eventually 
the hecked to Johnson connection works out. They find the socket. Yeah, digging deep there. The two lads who played with Dig from Boston last year. I do believe Tanner Johnson is going to be playing in the mixed division this season with Slow White. Mac Hecht's sister is playing in the mixed final. Coming up next after this, Zoe Hecht. Yeah, she got the MVP prize from the Singaporean team that they beat in the semi. G to Armstrong. These two own line handlers, you'll see them a lot. And already the Canadians being stretched. Vincent Lemieux dominating with his assists this week for the Canadians. Back with Armstrong, Lemieux available on the reset. Coming out of the stack, but a touch off. Keffer comes down with it, but an injury on the field. Two players collided as they bid for that disc. It's come up with Canadian in Canadian hands anyway, but Quinn Snyder not happy with the contact. Is everyone set? You hear our game advisors are mic'd up, Kate Mon 40. Just there to hear the conversation, not partake in it. You may get asked for her perspective and she'll be able to offer it, knowing the conversation that's taken place. Keffer to Armstrong down the line. G cutting, but it's a floaty disc. There's going to be a stack of pressure underneath this. Who comes down with it? It comes down in American hands and a turnover. High take from Eric Taylor. 23-year-old out of Durham, North Carolina, with a defense to give it back to the USA. Flick across to this near side and then centers, opening up the options deep, sends it. There's going to be another big bid, but the USA have got a better position. Leandro Marks in the end zone, cutting free of the Canadian defender and scores a second point to the USA. Sensational play from Leandro Marks, better known as the Sheriff from his college mates. It's actually an interesting story how he got the nickname, the Sheriff. He was uh, at practice one day, 6 a.m. practice. Afterwards, he was taking off his cleats, his one cleat on. Sees someone running with a handbag being chased by a cop. He tears after the criminal. With one shoe? With one cleat on, yeah. Manages to catch up, uh, apprehends the criminal, gets a high five from the U.S. policeman. has been known as the Sheriff ever since. A vigilante on and off the field, gets the first break of the game. And you've got to give a lot of credit to Eric Taylor up at the other end of the field, the Carlton College and a Minneapolis sub-zero player. Also coaches his team. That defense at the other end of the field. Canadians not going to be able to launch those big bombs into the end zone. It's kind of a hospital pass with that many players underneath it. The disc came down with the USA. A quick movement gets them a break. USA come down on defense. Canadians with Armstrong and a short pass to G, which was almost intercepted. Big bid from Cochran. G to Armstrong again. Those two so familiar with each other. Keffer plays a lot of rugby and we're in the National German Rugby Stadium here today. And should feel right at home. Armstrong to Lemieux. Back to Armstrong. Almost had gone the wrong way with the body but corrected. Quick movement, but uh, Lemieux already set up for the dump shot on that far corner now. Keffer, but a pick has been called in the middle of the field. Yeah, Cole Keffer going every other at the moment. They needed him to have the game of his life right now if they want to win this one. Keffer brings it around to Armstrong, continues to this near side and Snyder. Snyder had a fast cut from Barbieri to look at. Inside shot to Armstrong into the finest of windows, but Armstrong grabs the only moment he could reach that disc as it rose ahead of him. Keffer, he's got G available on the reset, has been completely poached off. And Vincent Lemieux cuts to the 
open side and takes the easy pass for a Canadian hold. They're into this game. Cole Keffer, he's like a wrecking ball with legs, just grinds up yards left, right and centre. Gets free when his team needs him. Lemieux there with the goal. Vincent Lemieux in the 66 shirt. He'll be very active this game. 22 assists and seven goals already this year. And in the Columbia game, he threw five straight assists um, in the double game point win over Columbia. Also 2017 Collegiate Player of the Year. Yeah, putting out a lot of content with the flat baller. And shout out to them. It's been a tournament where the media distribution methods of the youth have uh, been in full display. Instagram favoured over Twitter. And shorts and video clips being shared by all the teams and all the camera people. USA with the disc. Mac Hecht, the first pass forward. They've looked a little fluttered in that first point. The vote pass back to Hecht was overcooked. Hecht using his foot speed to get there. He's been the thrower to watch at this tournament, but he's got the wheels as well. Long sends up a big shot. It's going to be high. Big pressure bidding. And a Canadian bid just keeping the trying to keep the toes down but he knows it was out of bounds before he took off the Kiso elevates in the air for a massive block for a Canada that's got the crowd roaring Tom that's the sort of action we wanted to see the USA have had their way with this long game it's so effective against almost every other team but this North American matchup they're both used to playing against that sort of style of play just a little bit too much hang allowed De Kisto to catch up the yards and make that incredible bid. Sadler now. And we saw the Canadian D-line squander three opportunities to score in the opening point of the game. O-line defense from the USA. Really trying to crush any opportunity. Malik, OJ Samir. Playing with fire a little bit, the Canadians. Elijah Long going underneath. And deep shot is up. McKenzie trying to read it. Boxes out the defender. And then a lot of contact between the two players running in. And it's going to be a call here from Mike McKenzie. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of contact before they went up for the disc, kind of jostling fair position I'm not really sure if either man was at fault Christian Boxley running in with him see if we can get some audio from down on the field I felt like I held my line okay you felt like you came into me you felt like my line came into yours I felt like I got on top of you held a line there was contact I felt like there was bows on my ball made it up too so the two game advisors just discussing we will let them have that private conversation I'd call that a fair shoulder in a game of Gaelic football but not sure if it's appropriate for the ultimate field two men getting very physical there you could you could see exactly what Bo uh, what to Boxley and McKenzie were trying to do McKenzie trying to prevent Boxley coming to where the disc was going to to be did he hold his line or did he move into the 30 shirt well, for the USA? You fell into him. I fell into him? Yeah. Okay. Game advisor giving their, their view. It felt, okay, it felt like there was like serious contact, but maybe not. You saw me try to get after the disc. I, I saw you push me and then try and get to the weak side. I don't think we're getting anywhere with this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like okay. This don't, don't yeah. I, 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 I'm not, I'm really not trying to cheat you out of this. I it's honestly fine. feel that's the way. So we're okay. contested? 
Well, McKenzie, from that replay, looked like he was running straight-ish. Boxley was obviously moving towards him because that's where the disc was going to go. But McKenzie, maybe a little bit too much shoulder. The both players, and you can see Boxley wasn't happy with that that call. Yeah, I think McKenzie could have saved us all a bit of a drama if he just caught it on the second attempt, had a good chance to do so. But would there have been a, a foul the other way then? Maybe. Anyway, it's gone back to the last point where we could agree what happened. McKenzie resets back. OJ Samir looking for an option up the line. Switches the play to the other side of the field. Sadler. Fast waving hands of Elijah Long just missing the disc. Jason Hun. Low disc just picked off the turf. Oh, so close to a turnover. Hun has it back again. Needs to be providing some better service to his receivers. Jacks it into the end zone. And Malik OJ Samir collects for Canada. They've broken the USA back. A controversial call in the end zone is brought back and the Canadians convert on the second attempt. What an incredible tasty inside flick. We see a little break dance from the Canadians. That's their first break of the game. And you're wondering how they're going to penetrate that US end zone defense and they have to do a tasty little shot like that to open it up. Let's have a look at this rundown again. This is coming the first turnover. Beautiful tip off. Second time bid to retrieve the disc. And then this is Hun's shot into the end zone. Lefty break. Underneath the hands of the defender. You see the crowds it's packed into the stands here at the National Rugby Stadium in Heidelberg. One of the most beautiful locations for Ultima I think I've ever seen, uh, Liam, this southern sports stadium area. We've been playing on fields 13 and 14 all week. They're over to our left behind the stands on the far side of the field. And then now we move into the main arena. It's been reserved all week. The field is looking immaculate, perfect venue for this finals day. And the gold medal match in the men's division is on a knife edge, a rolling disc lands and the Canadians come down with their zone squeezing through the gaps the narrowest of channels the narrowest of margins Sol Yannick marshalling the offensive line yeah, Sol Yannick had a big game yesterday three assists in the semi-final really takes over a point when he's on the field we'll see uh, a book on a ride there he's going to have to do some Equipment change there. Just making sure the laces are fully tied. So Yannick won the captains. Gluten free and dairy free. Running through is Taylor. This Canadian zone frustrating and a tip just the fingertips flutters the disc nothing Taylor can do as it drops away from his hand and onto the turf high grab required from Carpenter keeps the disc alive for Canada going up the line Taylor marking out smartly floats it forward good cut from Akuma to keep Canada in this game again the D-line offense is a little bit shaky Big bid, what a take, that is Brian Quo at the far side, ahead of Taylor's outstretched hand. Canada with a break back again, they lead this one. The atmosphere right now, Tom, is electric. Already this game has more, had more twists and turns than the Nuremberg ring. What a way to start it off. Well, the USA have had a relatively straightforward run into this final. They, they have been pushed, but never really stretched. But the Canadians, they've had ups and downs on the way here. Their fight with the Colombians in the quarterfinals, one of the greatest games of Ultimate I've had.
had the pleasure to commentate on. But uh, they are, maybe that has, you know, really um, galvanised this team into a strong force. In, in some sort of irony, I think it's actually kind of doing so, let's say, bad. I think in fifth place at uh, this competition last year, I think that has really motivated them to come out all guns blazing in this final. And as I said before, a few men on this team have actually beaten USA back in Lecco 2014. There were some nice backdrops. And uh, Lake Como. So USA O-line have turned over five times in five points. So they've only been on the field three points. They've already turned over five times. Shaky start for the USA. Canada capitalized. They have one break up. And that zone is causing them problems. Hecht has the disc. Across the field is Scyther. Makes that pass. Looks for a gainer down the line. Being careful with the feet to stay in bounds. Cousin Tice to the centre of the field. Johnson resetting back to Scyther. Scyther flicks around to Hecht. Canadian fingers nearby, but no touch this time. Hecht, in that reset cut, drops his whole body and powers away. Cousin Tice again, and then onto the line, back to Scyther. Quick movement. Long and Scyther combining back to Hecht. Hecht eyeing up. The deep zone, and there's the hammer. Big bid going up from Canada. Contact made. Mac Hecht unleashes the cannons. And that one was definitely hotly contested here. Looks like a foul is being called. Ari, Ari Nick Tickman. Hecht with the hammer. hear the conversation from down on the field from my perspective there was contact in the air in the catching motion okay yep I'm gonna hand you the disc then you're gonna say disc is live and you can walk it to the front I'm gonna get off the field no contest so a foul in the end zone it's gonna be USA disc And the USA looking to score this one. Been challenged and pushed hard all the way. Not quite in yet. Johnson goes back around to Hecht. Short field, but the Can Canadian defence is hustling here. Sends it back. Scyther. Option up the line is denied. Hecht again. Static in the end zone from the USA. Hecht looking for an undershot. Resets back to Scyther with a high stall count. Scyther's got a good cut from Johnson to look at deep in the end zone and it's a flowing point in the end. But my goodness me, aren't the Canadians pushing this USA side hard? Yeah, fantastic defensive play from the Hickman. Actually uncontest the foul, but a good effort nonetheless. Elevated into the air and I think had it been USAU rules, that probably would have been a clean play. But initiating contact after making the play on the disc, so there's a foul and good spirit from the Canadians there. Boxley with the goal. Has appeared on Sports Center twice, Tom. Once for Ultimate and once for basketball. Had a winning shot for his high school team that made Sports Center before. And fantastic goal from Boxley there. Yeah, Boxley out of Baltimore originally, currently based in Washington, D.C. Played with the Georgetown University. You had that buzzer beater from Catonsville High School. They got on Sports Center top 10. Maybe a few of his high school mates watching this game now. Well, today's coverage being streamed all over the world. That's a, a high pull. We saw a few of those in the semi final against Italy. The Italians dropping one as it bounced off the chest of Tobias Mine. That was an easy point for the USA. You can see why they take that. That's that tactic, but penetrating disc through the wall of blue 
to Snyder. Resetting back to G. Keffer available on this near side. Armstrong the target and then Keffer cuts up. Fast movement away from Randolph. Randolph now marking low. G in the centre of the field. Floats it out to Barbieri and a pick is called in the centre of the field. Barbieri, a budding entrepreneur in the world of fish tanks and marine life. Had a turtle named Spud but got too big so he had to let it go. Snyder to G. G looking to Armstrong. Nice to so familiar with each other. The deep shot to Barbieri. Got to retrust that receiver. He goes up. What a grab. Barbieri. No need for a ladder. He can take it from the top shelf with just the power in his legs. Barbieri explodes into the Heidelberg heavens there. What an incredible grab. Well, we've seen how deadly he has been all the way through this tournament with his ups. And that was not an optimal shot. There was two USA defenders. They've both got a good read on the disc, but Barbieri's power, he goes up early, takes it at the maximum altitude and makes the, both of the USA players look like they never left the ground. Impressive work from the number five. It won't be his last point of this game. Very, very strong. Ty played with Furious George and uh, University of British Columbia this past year. And uh, one of the most focused players in the Canadian side. Very s serious about his ultimate and his turtles and aquatic life. He yeah, has three puffer fishes as well. Don't know if they can watch the stream, but yeah, passionate about marine life. We'll see if they can fluster this USA offense once more. Well, certainly from the, the neutrals' point of view, this game is shaped up to be a, an absolute classic. The gold medal matchup at the World Under-24 Championships 2019 here in Heidelberg. As Mac Hecht, or contact made downfield and the play is going to stop. The USA player colliding with Malik OJ Samir. Samar is waiting for the uh, shoe to be reattached. Kate Mon 40, our game advisor, just checking the stall count. Stays with the USA. Bisson on the mark. High rise from Boxley. Resets to Hecht. Hector's got Fisher going deep. That's what he's got his eyes on. No. Goes back to Scyther. Pick called downfield. There's more of the traditional North American style ultimate. Two handlers resetting to each other than all the other players. Big gaps looking for opportunities to go into that deep space. Fisher to Hecht. Cut coming out of the stacked. Hecht faking and floats a beautiful disc around to Scyther, real precision. Fisher needs to slide. USA looking better, more comfortable on the, on the throws. Now a poor shot, just as I say it, a bad execution error from Fisher. Two players have collided in the end zone. Apart from that, the turnover will stand. We're just checking that everybody's okay in the end zone before we get everything underway. Nick Vogt calling a contact foul, but it didn't affect the play. It didn't affect the turnover. So it has been, it'll stay as a turnover. Yeah, I got a bit of a taste of Mike McKenzie there. Nick Vogt, the Hodags man. Had an ACL injury before, but has come back strong from that one. Mike McKenzie, the king in the north. And you see Mac Hecht has come off the field, Tom. He's been sprinting around hard. Is that just... USA taking an opportunity to put a, a defender on the field rather than an out and out handler. Well, the Canadians, or is that two subs from the USA? Oh no, it's an injury sub for Hecht. 
unconnected with the play. Lots going on down here. Sadler. On the far side of the field, the cuts have dried up for Canada. It's a floaty scuba to Sadler. Resetting back to Natikman. McKenzie. Across to Hun. Armstrong. Blades one into the end zone. There's pressure arriving. And it does not stay in the hands of Jason Hun. Brilliant defensive work there from Eric Taylor to get the disc back for the USA. A blade from Canada cuts straight through the bread basket of Hun. He'll be disappointed he didn't get that catch. Taylor. Deep shot down, Fisher the target, pressure underneath it, rising and Fisher reads it better, lands on his back and a timeout call from Fisher. Yeah, he could see that the USA were going to take their, take a few moments to get down to the disc and I think a travel's actually been called. Travel's been called back on the throw. So... Yeah, but it was Eric Taylor who came on for Mac Hecht in that injury sub. Taking on the role as quarterback. Hun calling the travel as Taylor sent that deep shot downfield to Fisher. Fisher reeled it in. Wasn't quite where he would have wanted it. Five extra yards and a bit of extra height very slightest rolled from the tips of the toes onto the top of the foot but don't see those called very often vote to Taylor Taylor back to Fisher Fisher overthrows vote who chases it down after changing directions oh so quickly great reactions from the number eight shirt Swinges it into the end zone. Xander Kuzentice with the score, but Vote reacting quickest, changing directions, and gets the point for the USA. Yeah, Tom, the USA O line still looking shaky. Again, that shot to Fisher had to come back. Not sure if there's much for travel there. I see Fisher take the high grab. As graceful as a giraffe on rollerblades. But they're able to run it down here, vote. Again, that throw, a little overthrow, a little push pass to get the goal. They all count. They certainly do all count. The crowd's enjoying this. All the players finishing their games last night with the bronze medals. Games played in the main stadium, field 14. The Italians taking the bronze away from Japan. I'm very happy to do so after the frustrating performance they put together against the USA in the semi. The players, this is a, a party atmosphere here on finals day in Heidelberg. Superb weather, a little warm for the players, but makes for a nice relaxing atmosphere. Just watches the disc go out of bounds. Well judged. The disc lands in bounds or is caught in bounds. They have to play it from that back of the end zone. If it lands out of bounds, it's going to be jogged forward to the brick mark. If it lands in bounds and then rolls out of bounds, it can be brought to the front line. For those of you who are new to the sport, we will clarify a few of the rules along the way today. Armstrong to G on the sideline. Armstrong faking, and it reaches up and does not collect. Those two have had such a good tournament, but yesterday we saw some weaknesses against the uh, sorry, it's against the Colombians. We saw the connections between G and Armstrong not quite as tight as they have been. Conversation on the field here. Cole Wallen has the disc. His eight years of experience. Back pass. Sostrom. 
Moving down the line, USA threatening to break back, get us on serve again. Wallen. Sostrom and Wallen just happy to exchange discs in that handler space at the moment. Vertical stack in the end zone is pretty static, waiting to get active when the opportunity arises. Two players doing exactly that and scampering with the clever feet by the front cone, Jackson Cochran with the point for the USA to break back against Canada and level us up at four each. Chance Cochran, the Rio Bravo man, got his nickname from the John Wayne character in the 1959 classic. I don't know if you've seen the movie Tom, Rio Bravo, but uh, it's the first ever movie you heard the phrase, how'd you like them apples in? All the way back in 1959. Actually, the phrase originated from uh, World War I. We used to have toffee apples, which are something that true over the trenches. And uh, they shout, how'd you like them apples? Uh, Heidelberg weather treating us to quite a beautiful day. Humidity is acceptable and the temperature is high, 29 degrees. Sunny all day, slight haze hangs over the mountains surrounding this Heidelberg field as the fans struggle to find shelter. The two stands are absolutely rammed with players and spectators who've come with their teams out here to Heidelberg. So many families travelling with the players here in this under-24 division, Lim. Yeah, both the Canadians and USA family and friends travelling well. Great atmosphere here in the Heidelberg Stadium. Each stand filled to the brim. I did say we were at four each. Apologies for that. It's 5-4 the USA. We were back on serve. So two breaks to the USA, two breaks to Canada. And a very, very exciting game down on the field. See Daryl Stanley there looking through his convex prisms, eyeing up a few of those Canadian men's. Had a go at his binoculars. The magnif magnification is times seven, 50 millimeter diameter. If anyone wants to get a binoculars at home for the same reason, eyeing up the opposition, he says, make sure to get waterproof binoculars, Tom. Top tips uh, from Daryl Stanley. Very distinctive look. What he's doing down there is calling out the uh, players that are on the line for, for Canada and telling each of his defenders wh who he wants them to mark. Takes a lot of research and knowledge to put that sort of thing together. Lemieux on the far side with a high stall count. Caffey trying to get himself free. Still stalling. And Lemieux eventually lashes it through to G. Can't imagine that was far away from 10, Liam. Lemieux cuts up the line. G across to Snyder. They've made it to halfway, but the USA defence still standing strong. Marking every cut. Armstrong. On this near side, he's going to have to milk this one down the line. That's a very clever pass. Floats it forward. Is there going to be a pressure from the USA? Devon Thompson goes up with his offhand and does not collect the disc. The defender, he knew he was coming. But didn't actually affect the play at all. It's a mistake from Thompson. The USA have been given the disc back. Roommate of uh, Ben Burrell, Devon Thompson, hailing from Bowen Island. USA looking to capitalise with two breaks in a row if they can put this one in. At the moment, Yannuk finds a reset back across the field to Jasper Tom. Down the line to Taylor. Taylor sends it deep. Going to be run down by Matthews, who grabs on the edge of the end zone. Is he in? Another scorching sidearm from Taylor. Dumps back out of the end zone. Reset to Marks. Back again. Marks just lasers it into that corner. Jasper Tom lays out on the sideline. And USA have broken back twice. 
They were 4-3 down, they're now 6-4 up. Yeah, Jasper Tom with the goal. You see Quinn Fine actually has seven stitches on his forehead. He's wearing a bandana to cover it. That was Jasper Tom who gave him that in the warm-up three days ago. Very close to being in on that replay, wasn't he? Looked like he'd gone up, caught it. But didn't matter. Jasper Tom horizontal in the end zone to collect it. He's been at Carnegie Mellon for five years playing his ultimate. Originally from Palo Alto in California. I don't think USA have had their best game this tournament, but they're still 6-4 up in this final. It just shows the depth that they have. Well, the Canadians have made mistakes, and we said it right at the start of this game. If, if it's going to be close, the USA needed to have a bit of an off game, and the Canadians needed to play perfect. And that's, that's been the problem for the Canadians. The, you can't have people running into the end zone with a disc floated into their path. We've seen Jason Hun drop one. Uh, we saw Devon Thompson not collect. So that's two points. That would have been a very, very different game if those two had connected. G for Canada. Brings it out to the sideline where Ryan Hoy awaits. Hoy's disc is into the turf. Nothing Quinn Snyder could do. And it's starting to unravel for the Canadians now as US pile on the pressure. Cochran. If they can punch this one in, it'll be a real body blow coming towards the end of this first half. Half at eight points. Over the cross, the top. It's going to be drifting towards the sideline. Landed on the line. On first glance, looks like he landed toe on the line to me, Tom. From my perspective, your, your foot was on the line. Line? Yes. Okay. Landed two feet, one inbounds, one outbounds. Our game advisor, Philip Huber, being consulted. Philip said, from my perspective, you are out of bounds. Game advisors are always preceding anything they say with, from my perspective. Their perspective is not binding. The decision lays with the players and the players alone. Hoy. Centers the disc to G. G opens up the shoulders and spins it deep. Snyder the target. Snyder loses his footing. Two players colliding. Contact made and a foul call almost certainly coming from the 98 shirt. Yeah, the two lads ended up in a heap there. Not sure who tripped who. And we both thought it was going really far. And then it was short and then it caught wind. And so I'm going straight and then you changed your direction into me and like just came into the I wanna, space yeah. I was about to enter. So what happened was it was short. I realized it sooner because I looked back and you were still chasing me. I turned around you when you planted you put me, making me stumble and not even be able to get it over here. I think you just came into my space. So this is a foul contest yeah. or you can ask from my perspective. I'm going to contest. I think yeah. Go. So, game advisor's perspective not requested from the players. That's perfect liberty to do that. Cape on 40 just keeping the game moving. Yeah, I like that it was resolved fast. You can kind of tell that it was going to be contested. And it's just one of those weird situations where two players trip over each other and it's hard in these big game situations to maybe not call that or not contest it. I'd like to see Kate Mon 40 back herself to send that 50, 50 metre pass though. I reckon she could put that. G for Canada. Cutting round the back is Hoy. Barbieri out of the deep space. OJ Samar. Floats one across for Keffer. Acres of space for Keffer. Such a quick acceleration. 14 shirt Canada, but he's got a high stall count here. Floats it round the back to Snyder. USA might have had a, a bite on that. It was more focused on following the player back downfield. OJ Samar 
Cuts around. Keffer floats one deep. There's going to be a lot of pressure under this. Can Snyder eat up the ground? He can. A big bid from Timothy Shop. Misses the disc. Snyder collects in the end zone. Canada really needed to make sure they scored that offensive point, and they do. Cole Keffer, a big old body biscuit to Quinn Snyder, the general strike man. Played mixed Canada last year. I think his sister was also on the mixed team. Two brothers on this Canadian outfit. He did touch. He got a little touch there. Little touch off the top of the fingertips of Timothy Shock. That could have so easily have been a block. So easily another turnover. Let's see this go up again. Look. Does get the fingertips. You can see the wobble on the disc. Didn't affect it enough. And Snyder reaps the rewards of Cole Keffer's second assist of this game. Yeah, this final yeah. definitely a game of inches, Tom. Right. You see Mac Heck still on the sideline. I was uh, chatting with his mum, who was, just happened to be sitting next to me in the stands up here. She's got two kids in finals for the USA. Mac Hecht playing for the men's team. Zoe Hecht playing for the mixed team for the USA. Very proud. Yeah, the mother has also won a college championship like her kids for UC Davis. USA with Lanier. Lanier available again. Back to Taylor. And Lanier once more. Floats it across to Long. Long to Lanier again. These three handlers scurrying around trying to get free of the Canadian pressure. Bisong might have just waved the hand there and would have got a block. But the disc stays in American hands as Fisher takes it on the far sideline. Back to the middle. Just over the brick mark now. USA advancing. Just the dominator offense from the USA. The backfield keeping quiet until they're needed. And when they're needed, Nick Vogt steps out of the end zone with one foot raised. Keeps his back foot down and takes in a point to go with his assist from earlier on in the game. And we see again, no Mac Hecht on the O-line for USA. But they can do the business without him. I'd like to maybe see that Canadian side bring out that zone defense we saw earlier in the game. Particularly if Hecht's not on the field. He's usually the man that can pick apart the zone with his overhead throws. He seems to throw an overhead as accurately and precisely as, as anybody throws any throw. And that extra dimension can as Liam was saying, makes the zone much more ineffective. But if, if Hecht is going to be rested, just watching him walk across the field towards us now, 74 shirt, looks, um, looks to be walking comfortably. The USA going out on D now, see if they can get a block. If they can get a block, they'll take the half. 7-5 the USA with three blocks Sorry, three breaks against the Canadians, two in this first half. The World Under-24 Ultimate Championship gold medal up for grabs for the victors. Armstrong, no idea who he was throwing to there. There was zero cuts out of the stack. Must have expected something to happen, but no reaction and a straight throw away from the Canadians. USA with a chance to take half on the front of the end zone. Not quite in there yet. Yanuk. Looking for something. Canadian shirts hustling. Can they find a way through? Just bobbing up at the edge of the end zone. It's collected by John Randolph for the point, for the break, and for the half. John Randolph, the end zone tyrant, takes half the USA. Can they really this game of one point? All of a sudden, USA are taking half. 8-5. I'm not even sure how that happened, Tom. They just stepped up into another gear the latter of the second half. Armstrong, so unlike him. Actually a professional poker player. This seems to be in sixes and sevens at the moment, Tom. Yeah, he's uh, certainly not pulling a royal flush at the moment, is he? He's had an off game and they're so reliant on those handler set 
Armstrong alongside G and alongside Lemieux have run the show on this Canadian O-line this week. But if they don't connect, they're in all sorts of bother. You see the Canadians walking over to the sideline. The coach, John Hayduck, will be having a conversation with them about the intensity and what they need to do in the second half, tidying up those mistakes. The uh, USA up in the first half. And we go down to the sideline where Hannah is waiting with Daniel Darrell Stanley. Thanks for that, Tom. I'm here with Darrell, the assistant coach for the USA. You must be delighted to be up in this first half. Yeah, of course. I mean, Canada uh, came out really, really early, got up on us, and it was like it was two breaks for them, one for us. I think we're really pleased to be able to turn that around. Uh, Eric Taylor got a really critical block um, when we subbed him in, and that, that uh, stopped a little run, I think. Excellent. Well, in terms of you have such a depth of a program in the USA, what kind of qualities were you looking for in your players in terms of putting your squad together? Um, honestly, we were looking for players who are adaptable, um, players who can take uh, minimal instruction and be able to just kind of work with that, right? That could come from experience, that could be coming from uh, just an openness to new ideas and new ways of being. And like, honestly, these players are definitely that. They're some of the best at adaptation and we can go game to game, um, making adjustments and then they, they get them done. Perfect. With your goal differences at a phenomenal plus 85 coming into this game, how did you prepare mentally knowing that you've not been pushed maybe as many times as the Canadians? Uh, well, interesting you say that. I mean, we felt like day one against Japan was like quite, uh, you know, that was tough. And then Great Britain going up 5-2 on us. So I felt like in the first two days we maybe got a really, really great challenge. Um, and I think that um, really set us up for success. And after that, you saw our team coming out, you know, focused and strong early. Uh, maybe maybe not quite as much this game, but, uh, you know, we were able to fight back like we've done all tournament. Perfectly. And finally, the question, obviously, you've got uh, USA in every single final here. Has there been a little bit of inter-team banter, perhaps, some trash talking between the three squads, or are you just a, a pure unit? No, it's, it's like one delegation, one love, man. I mean, everybody's just so supportive of each other. It's like just a great camp. And, uh, no, the conversations have only been just like, I am so happy for you and so enthused for you, and I can't wait to see you. So it's pretty, pretty much that. Nobody's uh, competing uh, in that regard. So. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Daryl. It's been really fun watching the first half. We'll get back in the action with the second half. Back to you in the booth, Tom. So USA with a three-point margin, and we'll be back with the second half after this. teach kids about cancer symptoms through ultimate frisbee clinics join us and speak up an ulti world subscription gets you closer to the players and personalities you care about with game video in-depth written and video analysis uh, he's going to take off deep but what he does is very simple documentary shorts and we've played Fruit Squad before, and it, it just feels a little bit harder to lose this year. And a whole lot more. To get your subscription or learn more, go to ultiworld.com slash subscribe. 
The hills surrounding Heidelberg are one of the most beautiful scenes we've had for a World Championship final. And the USA are enjoying themselves out here on the field after being pressed hard in the opening section of the game. They were down 3-2, but they've pushed the Canadians back to late, take the half 8-5. Tom Styles alongside Liam Grant enjoying ourselves up here with this tight game. But the Canadians are going to have to step on the gas a little bit in this second half, Liam. Yeah, they've definitely flustered that USA O-line who seems to be missing Mac Hecht. Maybe that ankle injury becoming too much for the man. But the likes of Eric Taylor have really stepped up their game and carry this USA team into an early lead in the first half. Yeah, they are looking a strong force to be reckoned with and Canadian mistakes as well leading to that advantage to the USA. We'll see if they can sort out the problems in the Canadian camp as the second half nears. The atmosphere down here at finals day, always a fun one. All the players finishing their tournament yesterday, apart from the three uh, or three finalist teams. And we've already had the women's final taken by the USA over Japan. This men's final against Canada and the USA are back in action in the mixed final after this. All the coverage streamed across the world from here in Heidelberg. A real celebration from the youth of Ultimate. See a little shot of the bouncy castle there. Not the most famous castle in Heidelberg. You get a chance to check out the, the old castle here, Tom? I, I haven't actually been into Heidelberg at all because that my tourist day, which is the Saturday, I was solving some travel logistical issues. But anyway, we all made it here in one piece in the end. And the USA arriving a week in advance of the tournament. The whole squad formed together at a sports training facility with the accommodation and the, the, uh, the gym, the massage and the fields to practice on all in one location. All three US squads were there with their physios and their trainers. And crucially, according to the coach of the mixed team, very little internet. So force the players to come together. A lot of these players have not known each other very much outside of you know, the occasional high five in the post-game circle. But they have formed as a tight unit across all three sides. And the investment the USA Ultimate have shown in this under-24 championships, paying dividends. Armstrong needs to get back on the bike after that throwaway that gifted that first half final point to the USA. Keffer cutting. G available. This time the connection is made. Armstrong back with the disc. Not quite cutting as hard as he could perhaps Devon Thompson to Snyder. Snyder's low disc is collected off the turf by Barbieri. Ty Barbieri looks into the end zone, but good defensive pressure. That's a, a nice float behind the head of Cochran. Scuba's into the end zone from G. A pick has been called, and it'll come back to the front of the end zone. Yeah, Kinley G was actually cut from the 2014 junior team by Canada, then made the under-23 team in London the year after, and has been a standout at youth levels for Canada, showing that maybe he should have been picked back in 2014. G to Armstrong and another pick in the back of the stack. The disc will stay with Armstrong. Tap back in from the USA. Looking for a floaty over the top shot to Snyder. And another pick has been called or a vi it's a violation. Yeah, perhaps the defense not set already and the disc was checked in. Violation called when players move before the disc is active G looking for a way in here Armstrong cuts underneath and that's an intelligent disc from G these two know each other so well but not finding a way through the wall of blue shirts at the front of the end zone denying Canada and now with a chance to break f starting the second half exactly the way they finished their first shot goes deep it's going to be a, a long disc it just get pushed to the ground into that headwind and a travel has been called. You've got to presume that that travel is going to be retracted. And I think it was from the previous play. pass. It was from the previous pass. 
So Cochrane traveling, called by G. USA players had all stopped, apart from the two involved in that deep shot. Jeff Weiss and cutting into the end zone. Yeah, Weiss getting a get out of jail free card there. Threatens to do the same shot again. This time looks for the reset. It's a high pass, but uh, finer. Plenty of time to collect. Back to Weiss again. And finer, just the two of those involved. USA static downfield. It's just the handlers that are active at the moment. And now a cut going. So strong. It's uh, moving around in that deep space. USA always having the minimum number of players active. Everyone else knows their role. If it's not your turn to cut, you stay still, you stay out of the way. Floating a disc forward, a brilliantly timed jump from Cole Wallin. A high one-handed grab to keep the disc alive. Around the back from Sostrom. Spreading the play to Cochran. Sostrom cuts up the line. Good defensive pressure from Lemieux. He's been beaten. And a quick exchange of discs with Cochran. They move the disc back towards this near sideline. Lemieux eventually catching up. G on the mark now, but can't. Closing down Cochran's options. And then an intelligent disc from Cochran into the path of Sostrom. Back across to Wallin. Into the near side of the end zone. A high jump from Eric Sostrom. The hand outstretched, but. Touch the disc, but no connection. See the shot there from Cole Wallen. I thought it was going to be a goal. Cole Wallen actually has the words don't blink written on his fingers. That's kind of the motto of this team. They want to enjoy their time here. Really enjoying this whole championship, getting all the culture in. Yeah, a chance to travel and explore the world. The disc to Barbieri is too big. Could not connect. Very similar turnover again. One-handed connection not made. Finer. Big bid comes in from Canada, but does not connect. Finer down the line. Collects the disc. And USA are stomping now. They lead this one 9-5 with a break in the second half. Gwyn Finer, the Colorado man, built like a Cadillac. Actually... Took a replacement spot on this U.S. team, replacing Will Laurie, another Colorado man. Shout out to the whole Laurie family. I know that they're watching. Three siblings have represented USA. So we see the statistics for that first half. Turnovers are plenty from both these sides. The USA, that O-line turning over six times d-line turning over once as well for that seven turnover stats they won't be happy with that but getting the disc back again and again and again they fought hard in that first half and eventually got the breaks as well four breaks from five opportunities see some of the usa fans there all sport in the jerseys, like to see that. We've opened up a luggage department to the left-hand side of the shot as well. All the players checking out of the hotel this morning. They'll be off to the airport once the finals are done with. Myself and Liam travelling from nearby in Europe. This has been a local tournament, but for many of the players, it's uh, big jet lag issues and an expensive aeroplane built. Down on the field, Canadians. Jonah Lee Ash. Powerful disc to the sideline. To McKenzie. Two bites at that, that cherry required. Natikman to McKenzie. The King in the North sends it down the line. And it's caught by Tyler Sadler. And the Canadians score their first point in four attempts. The jungle jumper Mike McKenzie with an assist there won the Jack Jarvis Award from Queen's University in Canada. Goes to the best male sports athlete in the university. You can see why they're nice. Porter Biscuit into the end zone. Sadler with the goal.
Yeah, first goal of the game for Sadler. Hope my ginger brethren is wearing a sun cream today. That's Jeff Feist, isn't it? It is indeed. It is hot today, Tom, here in Heidelberg. Yes, we're sitting in the shade, myself and Liam at the top of the stands behind the camera. But the uh, metal frame of the stands is warming up as the sun moves around behind us. And it is steamy, I think is probably the appropriate phrase. And we're sitting in the shade. The, the players out there on the field, imagine the heat is an ongoing concern. In play again with Taylor. And that Canadian zone that Liam wanted to see back is here. Taking away first, second and third options before USA get it onto the line with Lanier. And then back into the cup where Hector waits down the line. Clever play from Hector doing exactly what he does best. Throwing the overhead and continuing down the line, the USA. Scyther cuts through and once that Canadian zone has been broken, there's nothing left as the USA shred their way downfield. Yeah, an incredible throw there by Mac Hecht, slicing open that Canadian zone. I said I wanted to see the Canadian zone again, but not when Mac Hecht was out for the USA on O-line, which he hasn't been every point. And once he got past that zone, it was easy money for Ted. We don't see very many zeros on the ultimate field, but uh, Scyther chooses that as his number. Trying to think of the most famous zero. Definitely the most famous zero zero would be Jonathan Goose Helton. I see, see some uh, stats from Mac Hecht. 23 assists in the tournament so far. He mentioned his sister Zoe playing in the mix final as well. And there's the Ulti World College Men's Player of the Year this year. Yeah, played with Brown University. He did that. score a point as well. He's not known to be an end zone lurker, but he has got a point to his name. I did witness that. When he played with Brown at College Nationals, he played on an O-line that was never broken, Tom. That's pretty remarkable for the whole of College Nationals. G. To Keffer. Zone from, oh, so it's not a zone, it's a poachy defensive look from the USA. Coming right away from the man they're marking, Leandro Marks just hanging out there. Barbieri comes out of the deep space. G down the line, not taken. Keffer for the reset. Explosive little ball of energy, Cole Keffer. Ryan Hoy now gets it to Kinley G. G has got that throw, but the defensive positioning in the deep is very good. G floats it across. Vincent Lemieux. Armstrong available. Armstrong cuts deep, spreads it out to Snyder. Armstrong comes back and... Sorry, it's not Armstrong. Hoy. Back to G. Hoy cuts up the line. Armstrong available for the reset. Keeping the disc alive, but not making much progress, the Canadians at the moment. Now, Armstrong to G again. Hoy was available up the line. G didn't take it. One cut at a time for the Canadians to consider. If the USA can take them away. Big pressure. Cole Keffer goes long and horizontal. And Quinn Snyder does the same on the other end to connect with the hammer grab, low to the turf. Incredible action from the Canadians. They were slow and steady all the way through that point, but they punch it in with the most exciting, and the crowd absolutely loving it, Liam. Yeah, he's gonna have to shower twice after that one, Tom, because that was filthy. Cole Kev for putting out the hammer, playing some spicy ultimate here, the Canadians, but get the crowd roaring. 
You see Armstrong and G as Keffer's incredible layout. Again, great angles from our Ulti World team. Double handed, making absolutely sure of that. Quinn Snyder with his second point of the game and the most exciting point. Two Superman grabs either side of the field from the Canadians. They still trail by three, but there's absolutely no doubt about the amount they want this game. We can see the scenes down here in Heidelberg. Which makes you appreciate quite how much narrower than a rugby field an ultimate field is. You see Kenna coming out on defense now. I'd like to see maybe the likes of Cole Kepper, some of their O-line stars, maybe G as well, play some D-line points because they're struggling to get breaks at the moment. We'll see if that happens in later stages of this game. Yeah, the O-line were last turned over at 4-all. But they were turned over five times before that. So had a shaky start to this game, but they've tidied things up. And if they can't get the disc off the Canadians, Mac Hecht just signalling where he wants the threats to appear. Fisher is available, but it's a 40-metre hammer throw to get there. Again, Hecht looks up. This time it's this sideline. Johnson the target. Perfectly into the breadbasket from 37 metres away. Hecht has got the sniper rifle out with that hammer. So accurate. Taylor down the line to Lanier. We're used to seeing those Crossville hammers just hang up in the wind, but not when Hecht's on the disc. Lanier floats it forward. Two players collide, and the disc goes to ground, and it's a turnover from the USA O-line. Canada with an opportunity to bring it back within two. Hun to McKenzie. McKenzie looks upfield, then... Brings it back around to Hunt. Low disc from Hunt, picked off the turf. There's going to be a down call here from the USA. Are we going to leave this contested and send it back? Uh, number 74 thinks he has perspective. You see our game advisor, Kate Mon 40, making sure that everyone gets their perspective heard. I think it's going to be contested down call. Very hard to see even from our replay. We do Brian not have time Quo, for The player involved because, for Canada. Because the other team is not agreeing with you, and that's how contesting To be honest, Tom, so I... Uh, I thought that was down where I looked at it. I thought maybe we could have a better opportunity to talk about that a little further, but it's going to be contested. So it's going to come back in. Brian Quo, certain he had it. Mac Hecht, certain he didn't. Neither of them able to agree, both considering each other's points of view. And uh, play keeps moving. Malak, OJ Samar, down the line. McKenzie keeps his feet in bounds. Kun, over across the top, clever disc. This time, no doubt that Brian Quo has it. Running out of options, though. OJ Samar would have required a tricky pass to get it there. Left hander, Kun. Intelligent disc down the line, floated forward. Mac Hecht on the defensive duties. OJ Samar again. McKenzie, powerful cut out of the end zone, trailed by Henry Fisher. Cutting up the line. Canadians getting no joy here. And a timeout called by the Canadians. Stall on four or five, Liam. Yeah, I'd say something like that. Timeout called by Mike McKenzie. A big Marble Olympics fan, Tom. 
Have you had a chance to watch a bit of the Marble Olympics? I, I have, Liam. I was, I was glued. Um, it makes the, the commentator has to do a lot of work uh, when you're commentating on basically marbles. But yeah, it's, I imagine that makes it an entertaining team bonding drinking game. Yeah, I think the training camps this Canadian team every evening to go home and maybe have a few cans and watch the Marble Olympics. Of, of isotonic drink, I imagine you mean. Of course, Tom, of course. Yeah, but anyone who hasn't seen it, it's kind of like a, a marble obstacle course, and the production quality is fantastic. The broadcasting top-notch, Tom. It really is, and on a very different scale to uh, what we're doing here. I've got to say that throughout this week, our broadcast partners, uh, Fan Seat and Alter World, have been brilliant to work with. The real team spirit amongst the, the media team. So the USA with that three-point margin. But they have turned the disc over, and they keep doing it. They've tidied it up a little bit. But Canadian zone forcing them to make more passes, taking away the deep options that they're so used to exploiting. So you kind of set up a kind of an offset vertical stack. Nobody in the dump space. Floating it into that dump space. And reacting fastest was Brian Quo. Seems to have been energized by that down call he contested. Waving away with the fakes. Players bite on every one. Jason Hun. Back to OJ Samar. Back to Hun. Looks back to McKenzie. McKenzie just takes it one step forward and then jams it down the field. And Philippe Pisson. Catches for Canada. They've broken the USA back. Michael McKenzie taking over on defense. That is a huge point for Canada. That is a break in the second half to bring this to a two-point game. I'd love to see them bring on maybe the likes of Cole Keffer now. He's had a bit of a rest, but this is a big, big moment for Canada. Get this break train rolling. Yeah, very lucky. We saw that replay Salzman and Hecht both heading towards the same disc head first very lucky they both pulled out didn't destroy each other but didn't get the disc either slight miscommunication right at the margins of this game so first half we had four breaks to the USA and only two to Canada and in the second half USA opened their account with another break to take it to 9-5. Canadians have tied it up their offense with two holds and then they've broken back and that is crucial. The D-line are out. They've uh, got their tails up and they are in the hunt for another one. And the USA have looked vulnerable in this game so far. Gold medal on the line as the disc hangs in the Heidelberg wind and drops just off the side of the field. It's going to be brought to the brick and against this Canadian zone, the USA will be very grateful for that extra 15 metre start. Strolling up, Eric Taylor with the assist to his name already. Denying that first pass through, looking for Yanuk. Hecht with the disc. Taylor cuts down the line, who's going to be looked off in favour of Yanuk. Barbieri, no sorry, it's not Barbieri, Bisson comes to cover, low disc rises in the wind to Lanier, big bid comes in from Canada, quick exchange of disc, recognising the Canadian on the floor, Snyder, Caleb Snyder on the D-line, Hecht requires Fisher to dive, back to Hecht, flipping the fingers forward, to Randolph, continues the cut, Fisher, Hecht has it again, Randolph just changes directions, a quick jump into the end zone, electrifying pace from the 34 shirt, the two teammates on Brown scoring the point for the USA, uh, a much better point for the USA O-line Liam. John Randolph, that man is electric, you got to see that one again, that change of pace going from static to 90 miles an hour in a matter of seconds. He has chromosomes in his body that belong in a Bengal tiger, Tom.
That's the sort of play that will get you a college championship, those two on the O-line for Brown. And that's uh, just each defensive point that the Canadians don't get near the disc, they don't get the block. You feel this game is ebbing away to North American sides. Players so familiar with each other from their college and club teams. Familiar, similar styles of players as well, Liam. But here playing for a very different prize, a unique prize in the world of Ultimate. Yes, yeah, the first time I've seen John Randolph play no point for USA all tournament long. Bringing him over when they need him most. The disc gets away from Armstrong, but fielded by G. Again, we see the three handlers for Canada, Lemieux. And Lemieux sends it deep. Ty Barbieri is going to have to chase this one down. The disc never looked like coming back in. And it's going to come back all the way down the field. Our game advisor, Philip Huber, helping out returning the disc to Eric Sostrom. That's a big blow. Barbieri had made up the ground, got himself free. USA D-line in the hunt for another break. Cochran over the top, into the end zone. Jasper Tom jogs on for his second point of the game, throws the basketball celebration. That's a big blow from the USA. They move one step closer to the gold medal. Yeah, massive blow for Canada. You're going to throw a flick hook like that. You've got to keep it in bounds at least. Losing a lot of yards with the Canadian O-line. It was just moments ago. They were, you know, a two-point game, 10-8. As you see, Chance Cochran again taking out a six-shooter and putting that one in the end zone. Jasper Thomas looked like a very athletic receiver all game, bustling around. 22-year-old out of Pittsburgh at the moment. Started playing ultimate when his brother coerced him into going to an ultimate Frisbee practice in his sophomore year. He uh, didn't get on with it at first, causing a whole bunch of picks and instead decided to focus on soccer. Uh, but then as more of his friends from outside started playing ultimate, he decided it, it was the game for him. Started focusing on it properly in his junior year. Flying high through the Heidelberg sky, the pull of choice for the USA has been this high blady backhand. Hangs in the sky, causes the, def uh, the, defensive, the offensive team to have a good think about whether to catch it or not. Armstrong and G combined with Keffer on the far sideline. Keffer to Barbieri coming out of the deep space. He's just looked unstoppable when he has the disc, but they've not managed to give him enough service. G cutting. G seems a little off the pace as well. Though. Those cuts that were so effective against the Colombians in the quarterfinal. Quite got that same burst of energy. Beard coming in from the USA, but Armstrong has it. Fakes the big release, centers it to Vincent Lemieux. And again, Armstrong not quite cutting back for that reset with the same burst of energy that's required against this USA defense. This time, Lemieux. Another bid arrives, Eric Sostrom. Bidding for every disc, the USA at the moment. Ty Barbieri gets caught. Coming out of the stack, a pick is called. It's coming back in on five. See Lemieux just waving at the team. You've got to get out of those spaces. But every cut requires basically a, a 25 meter sprint from a standing start. And you can only do that so much before the weariness and the fatigue set in. Canadians need a burst of energy here, Liam. 
Yes, O-line looks tired at times, but they'll keep on grinding, attacking that break side. Clever disc from Lemieux to Barbieri. Barbieri, and this time G's fake is bought. He has the disc now, down the line to Lemieux, just inside the field. Armstrong's cut back, exchange a quick pair of discs with Armstrong and G. Into the far corner, Barbieri grabs high. The takes of that man, they look so precise. He rises, he grabs, he lands two-footed. Precision work from Ty Barbieri, but the Canadian O-line looking shaky and rattled. Yeah, I think they did a good job of attacking that break side, though. You see here, the big ballooning around Flick. Pretty much all the yards gained by Canada in that vertical stack was just attacking the break side, allowing people to cut to that space. Just rather getting free with their arms rather than their legs. Do you think this is smart play from a tired team as opposed to what I, I, I seem to be selling it as they're, they're off the mark? They're, they're not, uh, not playing very well. And that was maybe that was the look they were going for in that game, keeping players quiet and just one at a time advancing the disc up the break side. I think it's a good strategy against this US team. You know, they're very athletic. Rather than try and use your legs to get open, throw your receiver open, attack those break side, there's not much win today. Quite easy to break the mark for the likes of these throwers. The defense always trying to shield one side of the field with their bodies, and then the defenders will mark up on the open side, the side that is not shielded. Cuts to the shielded side or break side of the field. They require a tougher throw, but when you've got handlers like the Canadians have, that can be pulled off to great effect. USA, three away with a three-point margin from the Canadians at the moment. Coming out on a side stack now. Last time they did this, they looked to isolate Hecht on the first pass. Exactly as you called it, Liam. Scyther available on the reset, but it's going back around to Taylor. Taylor has Boxley. Looks that option off and finds Hecht on the reset again. Going backwards at the moment, the US. High disc to Fisher. Six foot six, number 10. Trying to find a reset back to Taylor, who eventually shakes the attentions of the Tickman. He's better from the USA, Boxley. Nice work from Taylor, again getting free of Natikman. A switch from defence to keep close Scyther. And a pick called as the players interchange. Defence not able to keep up and a pick called. Some very few picks actually considering the amount of movement from both these teams. Back in, quick shot forward and Boxley collects. The USA move within one. The celebrations muted as the Canadians stroll off the field. But they are two points away from taking down the gold medal here at the World Under-24 Championships in Heidelberg. Getting his second goal of the game, Christian Boxley. Henry Fisher getting another assist as well. Not often you see him throwing the scores, usually a man catching them. But I think you got to shout out to Eric Taylor, who's been magnificent this game. His Jab step on the reset, just always getting free so quickly when needed, getting high in the stall count. Boxy there, man has played for coach Daryl Stanley before. I completely agree about Taylor. He, he's looked unstoppable out there. The uh, ring of fire player. I'm sure he's, he's Boxley on a graphic. The ring of fire play also coaches a boys youth team in North Carolina. I'm sure they'll be very proud of their coach representing here in Heidelberg. So a four point margin and the Canadians taking it down to the wire. If they're going to make a comeback, it needs to start here. It needs to start now. They're going to need to get four breaks back on the USA to take this game. USA have looked shaky on the O-line at first, but that is a magnificent pull right into the corner, floating high, and Elijah Jong setting himself at a standstill for the first pass defence. Lurking around, looking for that 
Callahan. If the USA can take the disc down in this territory, in the end zone, it'll be an immediate point, an immediate break to the USA. We managed to escape that threat at least. Devon Thompson to Snyder, better from the Canadians, moving it quickly. And Armstrong launches it deep, Lemieux running free, loads of time and space. So much better from the Canadians. Their crossfield movement was quick. Lemieux had predicted that and gone deep and was very happy to see Armstrong's perfectly weighted end zone shot as he jogged on and took the point. Yeah, Armstrong, a fitting name for the man as he lines up this big buttery biscuit to the end zone, easily ran down. That is a perfect backhand hook. Lemieux, that threat is there from him because he's always seen as a, a handler. So if they don't mark him deep, he's going to be coming back underneath. And he's very deadly with the disc in hand as well. He's thrown a lot of assists for the Canadian. In fact, I think he leads in assists for the Canadian team. Yeah, 22 assists, so he's, but he's got the wheels to get free deep as well. And the defender not expecting that. Wrong-sided, wrong, flat-footed, and conceding the point. I'm shocked Cole Keffer isn't on the line for Canada now. I think he's been their best player all tournament long. Again, scored the winning goal in the quarterfinal and semi-final. I like to see them in this crucial moment. Not much time left on the clock. Under eight minutes. Start putting your best seven players out there. You have timeouts as well. You can call a timeout and rest them if you need to, but you've got to put everything on the line right now. Yes, it's gold medal time. Canada put their O point in. Now they need to get the break. The zone. Four men in the zone trying to prevent passes, moving quickly between the handlers, trying to prevent that upfield shot. Not marking one-on-one. -on -one. Gets it across field to Tanner Johnson. TJ, as he's known in the team. Faking back deep into the end zone. And finally making their way out and forward to get it to Hecht. And the Canadians gone back to a one-on-one -on -one single coverage. Defence, Hecht running free of the attentions of Jason Hunt. Hunt catches up, but it's already down the field in the hands of Boxley, who seems to be getting free with ease at the moment. Hecht again, that jab step and a laser fast disc across to the far side. He raises a hand to the sky as he watches Xander Curzon Tice pull it down in the end zone with a slide on his knees and the USA within one of the gold. A bullet shot from the hip from Mac Hecht. That was an absolute rocket into the end zone, playing like I thought he would in this game, kind of taking over. You see him jabbing two or three times on the reset, eventually getting some yards and just wasting no time with that low zippy pass. Yeah, his ability to get himself free gives him the options, but when he gets there, the power of the throws, the accuracy of the throws just whips the arm. Superb technique. I spoke to him midweek, and just caught up at the sideline watching the Italians play Great Britain. Very humble man. Didn't want me to mention the fact that they might be in the final at all. Every time I said, hinted that they might get there, said, if we make it, if we make it. Wanted to make sure that he was focused on taking down one game at a time. That nice mix of confidence without the ego. Another massive pull, this time from Walker Matthews. Sails back in, he's played in five consecutive college championship semi-finals. Barbieri had come underneath, but it's uh, looking like a risky disc. Keffer reads it better. Passes forward to Lemieux, not quite in the end zone yet. And that's a nice throw around the back to Quinn Snyder. Relying on a misread from the USA, maybe not the best offensive strategy but it's worked out for the Canadians on this occasion yeah Kepper had his reading glasses on there and they get a nice little break pass to score the goal much better from the Canadians but now it's USA coming on offense if they can score this one they'll be taking home the gold medal well this is it every two years the youth of the ultimate scene combine in the under 24 championships it is a wonderful celebration 
of the precision of their college level divisions across the world mixed with the youth of the junior di division I, I very much enjoy this championships because of that mix it's still energetic it's still wonderfully um, optimistic and joyful uh, but the ultimate is of also of the highest quality and that's been on display here in this final from both these teams but the USA are on the brink now Canadians amping themselves up clapping their hands on their own line Mackenzie with the disc in hand looks across at the opposition and for the first time we do see Cole Keffer coming on defense now USA on offense for the game here with Taylor and a quick step Fisher's lurking deep Hecht has it oh, Heck doesn't have it now gets it back USA moving it through Randolph Johnson cuts Yannick has it in his hands they've made a lot of yards quickly Canadians going to a one-on-one -on -one defense Randolph throws to the break side and Mac Hecht dives on the turf and slides with the disc in front of him across the grass it would have been a hero and a fitting end for this wonderful young player to take that grab not completed on this occasion the Canadians have got the turn can they get the score Keffer keeping this game alive the only way they can do it is by putting this disc in and a low disc from Keffer apologizing just turns his head to one side to saying I got away with that Brian Quo again not a good pass back to Keffer the nerves kicking in Mag McKenzie adjusts the run and catches it just in bounds a hard cut he's been called in by Randolph but a pause to have that conversation and check everybody's ready coming in on one the signal we signal that the number you're going to stall on next stalling one he's put a one up not a zero OJ Samar back from Keffer. Frantic cutting from the Canadians. A shot across the field to Jason Huna. He sends it deep. McKenzie underneath it. Big bid. Two players jumping into the same space. Tanner Johnson, the defender. McKenzie in some pain. Wasn't a good disc. It was floating away from him. He threw himself at it. Tanner Johnson was there in a much better position. The two players colliding in midair. And McKenzie calling a foul in. This is desperate stuff from the Canadians. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure about that call. Actually, McKenzie just started coming under as that hawk went up. Not a good decision to take on that big throw. He did well to get back there, but I'm not sure if there was a foul on that one. You see the coach and the physio, John Hayduck, signaling to the team in black. And that's fine. It's, 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 it's yeah. So I feel like I was head and I made a play on the disc and in the space but I couldn't see you so I'm not sure if that's correct but I also think that I had the disc in my hand when we made contact. Oh I don't know. Okay so I think it's like yeah. Yeah. yeah but actually wait yeah like unless you think unless you think we have reached our time can we, can we, we go to the honestly we have reached our time limit should I go so I've already I've, I've provided my perspective to, to Tan I've, I've provided you? my perspective to Tanner. What, so I'll share that. Yes. From my perspective, he came from a blind area into into really, your lane. Really but he's he's contesting. I, I also anyway. think I had the disc in my hand. It's get contest. So everybody back to the spot of the throw. Came on 40, our game advisor providing her perspective, but the players making the decision that they could not reach an agreement. We go back to the last point 
where we do agree on the position of the disc, which is in the hands of Jason Hunt. He will need to put a better disc up into space. Big pressure from Johnson causing that issue in the end zone. Mike McKenzie has got it back. Glad to see he's got up from that big diving layout. Hun, floaty disc from McKenzie, just hanging in the air a little bit longer than he would have liked. Cole Keffer again bounces up from the field. There's a deep shot going up to two Canadians underneath it. My goodness me, Quinn Snyder reacting fast. A desperation shot into the end zone from Keffer with two USA defenders underneath it. But Quinn Snyder catches the garbage with a full length layout. Liam, they are fighting hard, every sinew of their body. We got a game here, Tom. Fantastic play by the Canadians. Mac Hex has an opportunity to win the game, but just overthrown Tim in the end zone. Canada marched down the field, a spicy flick off from Keffer. I don't think it was on two USA defenders there, but somehow ends up in the hands of the Canadian. They were lightning fast reactions after that disc had come off the top of the pile. Should get a good shot here from our sideline camera. Keffer's disc was not optimal. Quinn Schneider got up. He got his hands in a good position to make that grab first time round, but needed the second dive to keep the disc alive. Well, that's one break. That's one game point saved by the Canadians. Will they have got into the heads of the Americans? Or will the incident in the end zone between McKenzie and Johnson have only made them all the more determined to take this game, to take this gold medal? The World Championship final here in the under-24 men's division is hot in every possible way. Yeah, it's been a fantastic game so far, Tom. So unfortunately, only one team can win it. We'll be going back to the... North American continent, but will be a gold medal in the hands of the Canadians. Or this USA team still game point for USA. If they can score here, they will win the match. And they'll have, even if they can't score here, they'll have another couple of attempts. It's, it's very much looking like the Americans have got the advantage, but you can never say, never count out a team that's prepared to fight as hard as the Canadians are doing right here. The USA O-line have given them opportunities. And you see a lot of belief in the face of these Canadians. Cole Kepper with the disc back out there again. He was part of that U-20 team that beat USA on Universe Point. Actually lost to USA by one point in a game of rugby, representing Canada at U-20 level. Lost by one point that game, so he's had lots of experience in these situations. Yeah, Keffer with 13 goals coming into this game as well as 12, sorry, 12 goals and 13 assists coming into this game. Four assists in this game already. Time cap gone, it matters not. It's a game to 15 at the start and it's still a game to 15 now. Jogging it up to the disc to the brick mark as that pull has landed out of bounds. See this zone look again from Canada. Hardly room to swing a cat in that cup. Explosive Taylor starts us off, gets it across to Randolph. This is the dream team from the USA. Fast movement from Marks, gets it back to Taylor. Marks, real power in the cuts from the USA here. Big bid coming in from Barbieri. Doesn't get a touch stays with the USA. They're so close, they can smell the gold medal. And a pick called further downfield as Yannuk came out of the end zone. Two nations hold their breath here in Heidelberg, Germany. Disc is gonna come back in. And they are five meters away from the end zone. Just needing this point. Floated disc across, stretching the receiver, but safely into the hands. A reset back. Dicing with danger, but Taylor collects, dishes the pass off to Marks, into the end zone, and a take in the end zone for USA. They get the point. They've looked solid all game. 
They've looked the better side. They pushed the Canadians well. And they take down the gold medal in the World Under-24 Ultimate Championships. Liam Grant, it has been an exciting game. The Canadians have made a real um, go of it at the end, but the USA just too good. John Randolph, king of the end zone, does it again. Under a lot of pressure there. Ecstasy for the USA team. Heartbreak for Canada. They fought very hard and definitely deserve that silver medal. Couldn't have asked for a better final, Tom. Great to see the two players walking away from that. Barbieri cutting into the same space to try and get that block. Didn't quite manage of it as the lightest contact as the two players. And the spike, the USA, you can see how excited they were about that win. 15-12. At times it looked like it was going to be a much more one-sided contest. But the Canadians fought so hard. Big performances from Cole Keffer with his four assists. But you only have to look down the distribution of the stats across the USA. Three goals for John Randolph. Uh, two assists and a goal for Marks, two for Boxley. Cousin Tice has got two points as well. Oh, we have to get our breath back before the mixed final. But the USA, two from two so far here on finals day at the World Under-24 Championships in Heidelsberg. I've been Tom Stiles and Liam Grant. We have had a real show so far out here in the sunshine in Germany. Yeah, what a game, Tom. I have to give a shout out for Eric Taylor. I think he was a standout for that USA team. One of the, I think the only returner from last year. John Randolph, just a tyrant in the end zone. I have to say it again. I don't think I've seen a, a player better in the end zone. Brought him onto the O line yet again to do the business when it matters. So, two from three for USA. So the USA take the game 15-12, really, really impressive performance. But it, they didn't have it all their own way, Liam. The, the first half, they took that opening point and then broke the Canadians. It looked like it was going to be a very one-sided affair. But then the Canadians scored their own offense and broke them back twice. And it, the USA looked like uh, they were at sixes and sevens, turning over on offense. But they clawed their way back. and finished out the first half with an 8-5 lead uh, the, but the Canadians I mean they, they really showed a lot of spirit and guts out there yeah I think the big difference between these two teams is just depth of squad you look at USA you know Mac Hecht was probably not having his best game at the start they take him off Eric Taylor comes in and fills in that role John Randolph again playing mostly D-line he comes in and steps up there's so many players from all over the roster maybe the Canadians their D-line was good but couldn't convert as well as the USA team. Henry Fisher with three assists in that game. He barely had an assist all tournament, but doing the work with the disc in hand. And Fisher has had six, six assists all tournament to go with his eight goals, and then pops in three in the final. Great work. Yeah. Yeah, Fisher went to first grade with Saul Yannick. So they've, you know, junior school teammates winning gold medal here what an experience for them yeah we see the medal ceremony being prepared but right now we're going to leave you with a few highlights of the game usa taking this one 15 to 12 with a strong performance well done to them and silver medal to canadians a hard fight but ultimately they were just that one step behind the world under 24 championships to the usa
reach it early. Help us teach kids about cancer symptoms through Ultimate Frisbee Clinics. Join us and speak up. We play better. An UltiWorld subscription gets you closer to the players and personalities you care about with game video, in-depth written and video analysis. Uh, he's going to take off deep, but what he does is very simple. Documentary shorts. And we've played Fruit Squad before, and it, it just feels a little bit harder to lose this year. And a whole lot more. To get your subscription or learn more, go to ultiworld.com slash subscribe.